restrictions are being progressively lifted, but I mean, we are a few tens of people, so let's try to be, continue to be careful, okay? So, while enjoying being together, but uh, careful, as carefully as possible. So, yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Okay, so um, so the, as the first talk, I would like just to introduce some of the philosophy and what we are going to do for the next days. I mean, what is the goal of the school? Of course, the goal of the school cannot be to, to transform you in, uh, in advanced users of the code and, um, and in theoreticians, but to give you tools and ideas of what to do next. Um, because actually, uh, the world where Yambo is, is, wor is working is the giant world of material science. And um, so uh, the first thing to understand is the tool you, you are going to use is something that's been developed along the years for a specific mission. So why is there? And what is more importantly is that after so much coding, so much development, the code itself is a big thing. I mean, it's a super monster, super tool, complicated with 200 variables and so on and so forth. How do I use it? And so you have to master First of all, the equations that are coded in the code. This is very important. This is something that me personally, uh, I think is the most important part of the story. Um, yes, because actually at the end of the story, you have different uh, communities acting in the world of material science. And this is something you realize when you start working in it. Because if you have uh, physics, so theoretical physics and applications, above this, there is the entire world of codes and in the recent years, computational physics and even computational theory. So sometimes, as a theoretician uh, that I've been working for Farman Dagens for so many years, I found myself studying the theory of GPUs or theory, or theory of linear algebra, these kind of things that I never imagined I had to study. This is because things have changed. So actually, you have several actors in this material science, and there are theoreticians, there are the runners, the guys that run the computer codes trying to get data compared with the experiment, and there are the experimentalists. And of course, with different, I don't know, I'm sure many of you had to fight with the experimentalists, and, and in general, at, at the beginning, you spend like six months creating a common language. I mean, giving same meaning, <laughs> same words. This is very instructive. Um, so theoretical physics is something that, um, even if it may appear far from the final application, is the real engine of all the story. And this is something that we will go through uh, doing several lectures. So Pedro, for example, after me, will give the first lecture about many body. This is actually the engine, what drives everything. So when you run Yambo, Yambo is just running and solving many, many body uh, equations. And then if you don't know exactly which kind of equations are solved, you don't know what is the meaning of the variables, you don't know absolutely how to set up the variables, and in general, you most probably you will get garbage. You will get numbers, but uh, boo. Um, and the problem actually of many body is as simple as complicated. You have a, a system of particles, of bodies. So those bodies can be anything. I mean, it can be electrons, or it can be even more advanced stuff. And in general, they are interacting through a potential. The, the bad thing of many bodies is that this potential is long range. It's not short range. Being long range is almost impossible to solve exactly, so you have to use tricks. And there are two main tricks we are, um, I mean, that are used by, by, by us, by Yambo, is density functional theory and many body. So they are completely different theories with different approximations and different goals. But there are the two pillars. So you have DFT and many body. So in DFT, you actually want to rewrite exactly the ground state problem. With many bindings, that you want to rewrite exactly the excited state problem. And then, and then you will see in practice what does it mean, all this. At the end of the story, you get a scheme that is the one uh, Yambo is based on, where density functional theory is the starting point. So you first do a DFT calculation. You get the basis of your, of your system. In practice, actually, you write your Hamiltonian. You rewrite your Hamiltonian. You start from an Hamiltonian that is complicated. You have no idea how to solve it. You say, OK, take a second. I rewrite it using DFT in a mean field plus correction. And at that point, you apply many body. 
The good thing is that you include already some part of the problem you don't know how to solve, correlation part in the FT. And the price, the price to pay instead is that you have to own many body machinery and so on and so forth. But in addition, as you have started from a density function theory calculation, you are parameter free. So your calculation is for silicon, for gallium arsenide, for the nanotube, for the surface, for whatever. So when you run the FT, you actually create an Hamiltonian that is specific to your system. And all the calculations that will be done after are specific to that system. So the numbers you get, if correct, can be compared to the experiment. Now, the tools we are going to use are just at the beginning of a, of a ladder. So if you go back to theoretical physics, you know that depending on the experiment you want to uh, study, you need to understand which one is the right tool, theoretical tool. So we will go back to this in a moment. But I mean, bear in mind that many body is you know, at the bottom of the ladder. Because above this, there is non-equilibrium Gibbs function theory. There is um, mean field theory, and so on and so forth. So uh, it depends on what you need to calculate to choose the right, the right theory. And then we have this last actor entered in the, in, the, in the story that is computational physics, computational science. Because at the beginning, uh, Yambo was written by me during my, my, my PhD. So I was doing my PhD and I started writing Yambo. And then it was possible at that time. You know, you write your personal piece of code, then for some reason you decided to, to push it more and then potentially you can get after a long uh, evolution, after lots of people entering the in developments, you can get something that is stable and, 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 and used. But the point is that uh, if along the years you create different um, applications of the code, the point is that you have to, oh sorry, this is, I wanted to tell, yes. The point is that, yes, this is, I wanted to tell you after, but no, it doesn't matter. The point is that you have to find yourself with the fact that the code has to run on machines. And this is something that, uh, it is a problem for you, it was not a problem for me. I mean, all my first papers were done on a PC, running on a, on a young PC. Uh, the point is that now, instead, com the materials have increasing complexity, and the machines where the code run have increasing complexity. So when you now code and use the code, it's not enough to know the code, but it's also important to know how to run it on specific machines. So, for example, if you want to run, I remember very well that the, 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 the first version of Yambo when it was ported for the first time on an IBM supercomputer, Yambo was not even compiling. Not even compiling. And after compiled, it was giving out a number for months. We didn't know what was going on, and it was terrible. Because those machines are very complicated, and, and they require fine tuning that sometimes is as important as the coding itself. So this means that we will try to give you also some, some elemental concepts about Parallel, parallel uh, simulations, and also about the more recent advent of GPUs, uh, graphic cards, and so on and so forth. Um, oh, sorry, this is back. So, uh, last thing I want to tell you is that Yamba has grown enormously along the years. So, what uh, makes me really um, happy with that is that apart from the several developers we have in different projects we managed to create also a user infrastructure. So there is a forum, there is a wiki page with instructions, and all this is needed because we, we really do lots of schools. So this is a series of schools that we did in, in CCAM. Uh, I forgot to put the t-shirt. Okay, there is a t-shirt, I have the t-shirt, I will use it in the next, in the next lectures. And, um, and lots of schools, so really lots of schools. Along the years we did tens of schools. And next week I will be in Congo, in Kinshasa, to do a school about Yambo. So we, are, we really travel all over the world. And this is really important and is enriching for us because we met students and we had the opportunity to see what are the, the problems of the students and how Yambo eventually can help in science. Because this is a, the key of, of the school. You have to see whether Yambo can help you, either using or either learning how it works, and then you have to select the applications, the field, and the tool that, 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 that better fits your needs. Now, and now the most important part of the story is um, how you move from 
from your unknowledge, from lack of knowledge, to the knowledge? What is the path? Because at the, end of, at the end of the story, you want to get an interpretation, a spectrum, a number, something. I don't know, maybe you are interested, I don't know what are your interests. At some point, I think that we will, maybe we will have a chance to discuss it. I don't know, in, during your PhD, uh, your boss told you that there, there is to interpret the absorption spectrum of a surface. To see the effect of the adsorbate on the surface, if there are peaks moving, appearing, or not appearing. And sometimes you are lucky enough, you have even an experiment to compare with. But in general, it's unobservable. It can be, I don't know, um, ARPES, angular result for the emission spectrum, or X-ray for the emission spectrum, or, I don't know, a temperature, a critical temperature, a conductivity, can be anything. And the point is that, okay, how do I calculate this thing? How do I get it? And this is the, 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 the road you have to take. You have the simulation at the end. You want to reach this point, but this is at the end of a procedure. Because you have the physical phenomenon, that is what you have to calculate. First, you need to understand how do I calculate this physical phenomenon? I mean, if it is absorption, you need the response function. If it is band structure, angular solve for the emission spectra, you need the single part of Green's function. There are different objects. So you need to understand what is the uh, microscopic variable inside the theory that gives what you need. Then you have to understand how to calculate this thing. I mean, if you write on a piece of paper the response function, it contains at least two integrals from minus infinity to plus infinity. And how do I do it? I mean, you need to calculate. Either you get a model and you get the solution exactly analytically, or you need to find a way to uh, actually implement it numerically. Even when it's implemented numerically, that's not enough, because you have to simulate. So you have to understand what, how, and where to run it. And all these different steps, of course, are not exact. You cannot, if you can get exactly what is the object you need to calculate, in general, you cannot get exactly the theory for that. You cannot get exactly the form for that, and you cannot get exactly the numerical implementation. You need to find approximations at all the level of the procedure. And the quality of the number we we'll produce is exactly the sum of the quality of the approximations. So if any of you, for example, is interested in the ARPES of uh, Copyrights, where in general you see upper bands. Yambo cannot give upper bands because of the approximation inside the, the theory we used. So you need to go to something else. Either you implement this tool or you know, we have to find a way. This was done along the years. I mean, Yambo got more and more tools, more and more extensions to calculate more and more stuff. Now, um, an example is, if you need to calculate absorption, there are lectures and, and references for light matter interaction and spectroscopy. And then, depending on the, the theory you are interested in, you can use many body, density functional, and so on and so forth. And then the numerical implementation. The numerical implementation can require the study of how to discretize equations and how to use numerical methods. So it's a lot there. This is really important. So at the end of this week, I will be happy if with Yambo you will understand that there is a procedure, there is need to study and to get details of what you want to calculate in order to produce reasonable and meaningful number at the end. Okay, very quickly, uh, at, at every school, there is someone asking where is the logo of Yambo coming from? It's from the collaboration, the, from the time where I was working doing my, my postdoc and Mirta also was there, we were working together. And actually, it was, uh, to do this paper, I was drawing lots of, of vacuum polarization diagrams. So I was really, uh, I could really dream them during the night. I was in the blackboard everywhere with this vacuum polarization diagrams. And Mirta, uh, seeing all those diagrams, so that they could translate it in an oyster. So in oyster, the oyster Yambo is a vacuum polarization diagram. And that's all. Thank you very much.
Other questions? Yeah, ask step by step. Yes. Uh, I can, can I get you. <laughs> so we have very different types of code in the market these days. Yeah, Yambo is one of them. Like, if you want to solve a specific problem, does it mean I have to read about the theory of all these codes before I start thinking of okay, which pro particular problem to solve? Well, it, it depends. It depends. I mean, you, are, you have to have a control. I mean, if now you go back, you say, I don't want to study, and then I want to calculate the absorption of lithium fluoride. Then you can find somehow on the web the input files of lithium fluoride, and then you will ask Yambo to give you the input file to do the absorption. You will get 20 parameters. This is the minimal mode. If you increase the verbosity, you will get 50 parameters. And so what? You don't know the numbers, you don't know the values. You can guess, but you don't know. So at the end of the story, to do a calculation, you need to connect what you are calculating with the theory, with the object you want to calculate. Then, of course, if now I tell you a response function, or even worse, I tell you this function is defined on the Keldish contour, you have no idea what is the Keldish contour. You have to go back. The point and the, the things you need to study it is a matter of experience. Of course, there are a series of lectures that are essential to understand the thing. But then while the computer runs, maybe you can keep, <laughs> keep studying more. More you study, and more you have control. And control is knowledge. Where is the voice coming from? Um, yeah, just a second, because uh, we cannot hear you very well. Uh, Hybrid schools. Hello. Ah, eh, c'è una domanda da Zoom, ma è molto basso il volume, non si sente. Okay. So let me understand if I understood properly. You say that when you run Yambo, you can use your personal PC, but to do a research in, for a specific materials, you may need more resources. Is it right? Okay. Yes. Did I get it right? Yes, this is a big problem. I totally understand with you. This is one of the biggest problem now in, in the extension of material science to parts of the world where there are not so many computational resources. This is a gap to be filled, but a gap to be filled, I perfectly know. And, but, but there is still room for lots of work in the sense that me personally, most of the papers I did at the beginning were run on a PC. I mean, they were not supercomputers. It's true that science was different, but still today it is possible. I mean, 90% of the runs to uh, be familiar with Yambo can be run on a laptop. There is no need of supercomputers. It is true that at the end, if you decide to do research on a nanostructure, on a big nanostructure, on a surface, or a nanotube, or whatever, with lots of atoms or heavy atoms, you need a supercomputer. Or you need a machine with lots of memory. I totally agree with you. In the case where you need to do a simulation on a large material, and you are in a developing country, there is a big gap. Still, I think ACDP is working. They have an institute in Rwanda, in Kigali, and partially is providing with uh, uh, computational resources to students. Of course, this cannot be done for anyone, but things are enormously changing. Okay, so 
we have another question from a student online, uh, and then I think we, we switch to the next speaker. So the student is uh, Gubega Adebayo. You can try to unmute yourself. Is there somebody speaking? Kubeya, can you unmute yourself? Okay, now he's not muted. Sorry, can you, can you try again? I'm sorry, just turn to repeat because you're having some problems. Okay, so clear. Um, this actually, um, it's not the right question. I mean, in the sense that uh, you need to find can, the can, two. Can you repeat the questions? For yeah, the question is, what are the, the pros in using Yambo compared to other codes? So why, why should they use Yambo? Absolutely. Uh, you have to find a tool that better fits with your research. If it is Yambo, we're happy. Otherwise, not a big problem. At the moment, at the, during the school, you have to consider Yambo as a tool to study the, 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 the procedure to get to the final uh, observable. What we have done in Yambo along the years is to create as much as possible a user-friendly code. So an example, there are tiny examples. I mean, one example is that, for example, I am very bad in memory, so I cannot remember things by earth, no way. So Yambo is able to create the input file itself. So this is, this is a user pro, in the sense that you don't have to go through a, a, a long list of variables to create your input file. Then it's GPU ported uh, and, and, and heavily parallelized. But I mean, those are technical details that actually don't decide exactly uh, the code to use. So you have to decide the answer, to find the answer to this question. So there are, of course, many ab initio codes around, but most of them are focused on DFT, density functional theory. In, instead, there are uh, fewer focused on many body perturbation theory, like Yambo is. So this is also one big difference. Okay, we move.